when I think of the word hood, I think of a person, a place, and perhaps even a thing. I'm Sir Creepsta, and welcome to Ghost Stories from Abroad. Tonight's tale of terror is entitled, Cigarettes from Beyond, Carthage, Indiana, Ghost. When it comes to ghosts and hauntings, I'm quite sure that one can go anywhere in the world and run into someone there who has a great ghost story or two to share with you. Tonight's tale of terror once again involves my precious Deanna and her family and how they all experienced a ghostly haunting firsthand while living in Carthage, Indiana. So, sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and be terrified by yet another ghost story from abroad. The time period that this particular story takes place, according to Deanna, was somewhere around 1993. It was around that time that her family, which consisted of herself, her ex-husband, and their two daughters, had moved from a smaller home at the time in Greenfield, Indiana, which was a suburb of Indianapolis, Indiana, to the downstairs portion of the old Carthage Hotel, which was an historical hotel in Carthage, Indiana. From having lived at the hotel in Carthage for about a year, they moved out into the country into a spacious home. The large blue older style home out in the countryside offered them four spacious bedrooms, a large kitchen, dining room, living room, and one bathroom. This was like a breath of fresh air to the mile after having lived in the bottom portion of the hotel for so long. Up to this point, nothing out of the ordinary had ever taken place while living in Indiana. Before I go any further, don't forget to smash the hell out of that like button. Also, click on the bell icon once you are on YouTube so that you can be notified each and every time I drop a brand new video. At the time of the move into the blue house, the girls were about 9 and 10 years old respectively, and everyone was excited to be moving into their new home. It was around March of 1994, according to Indiana, when they moved into their home. And seeing that it was in Indiana, the weather was still fairly cool. This didn't matter at all to any of them, especially the girls, seeing that because the home had four bedrooms, it assured the two of them that they were guaranteed to have a bedroom all to themselves. This also allowed them to have an extra room to store all of their games and toys. Deanna stated that the master bedroom was located at the top of the stairs with a small loft off to the corner of it. According to Deanna, the location of the master bedroom being upstairs was great because it allowed everyone in their home to have their own privacy. Deanna stated that the layout of their older home style was beautiful. Not only did it have large bedrooms, it also had a very spacious dining room area with a huge stone hearth in it, a very nice built-in fireplace with a Benjamin Franklin wood-burning stove resting on top of it. So, to the end of this new place they called home was heaven. Things had been going fine for about a month. It wasn't until the girls started to hear what sounded like scratching sounds coming from inside their walls that things would suddenly start to change within their home. At first, according to Deanna, her and her husband just wrote the scratching sounds off. It's probably coming from some of the local varmints that lived inside the country long before they had gotten there and had just decided to make the inside of the walls their home as well. But according to Deanna, not long after the girls had reported hearing the scratching noises, they were soon awakened from their sleep to the sounds of knocking from both outside their doors as well as from inside the walls themselves. Although this frightened the girls terribly, Deanna stated that her and her husband really didn't pay much mind to it, realizing that the scratches and knocks could be coming from an assortment of different animals that shared the part of the countryside with them. Deanna stated it wasn't until one day, whilst pouring down with rain outside, when her husband started to notice cigarette butts scattered all along the hearth area of the dining room, that knew that something strange was definitely going on in their home. According to Deanna, the findings of the cigarette butts were strangely odd and out of place because their home was tobacco free, meaning that there should not be any type of tobacco products whatsoever found in their home. 
she stated that right after the discovery, she and her husband, as well as her two daughters, would start to notice and discover the butts while it was raining or if after it had rained for some unknown reason. Father come and school had started back for the girls, according to Deanna. One day while she was awaiting the girls to come home from their walk from school, things would take a change for the worse for her and her family. After getting inside and settling in, the girls went to the dining room and sat down at the table to do their homework. While sitting there, Sarah, the youngest of the two girls, would ask her mother, Did you see that, Mommy? Not knowing what Sarah was referring to, Deanna stated that she said to Sarah, See what? Sarah would, would reply to her mother, asking her if she saw the cigarette butt that had just dropped down right out of the ceiling. Deanna stated that at the time, they all looked at the ceiling, and to their surprise, the cigarette butts just started falling down from the ceiling one after the other. Deanna stated that at that moment, all she could do was shout out with the actual, what the actual hell is going on in our house. As she and the girls were sitting there terrified and in disbelief what they had actually witnessing right before their very eyes. Deanna stated that although this strange phenomenon had scared the crap out of them, especially the girls, she still didn't have a logical explanation as to what was going on within their home. But she did state that right after the cigarette incident, things within the house got much worse, especially with the scratching and knocking sounds heard throughout the house. Soon after, according to Deanna, the girls would begin to complain about how much colder it always was in their toy room compared to the rest of the house. Something Deanna stated that she first started to notice back in the summer. It had gotten so bad that the girls would soon refuse to go inside the toy room altogether, just from the coldness and the fear it gave them whenever they went inside the room to play. They instead would go to their own bedrooms to play and have fun. But for some reason, this didn't matter. For not long after that, the girls would also start telling their parents that they would often wake up out of their sleep at night freezing, and the two of them would get the gut-wrenching feeling that they were not in their bedrooms alone. They spoke of seeing shadows of something standing in the corner of their rooms, only to turn on their lamps and find nothing there. The girls also spoke of often waking up in bed, shaking from chill in their room because somehow their blankets would be off of them and end up in odd places within their rooms. By now, Indiana stated that she and her husband had had enough of the bizarre things going on inside their home, and they knew that they needed to, get, to try to get out of there as soon as they could. The only problem was that they weren't in a position financially to just up and move and drop at the drop of a dime. It wasn't until a month or two later that they were finally able to do just that due to the untimely death of a relative of her husband's who had left behind a fine home for her husband and the rest of the family to move back into back in Greenfield, Indiana. Deanna said that right after the move out of the house, she stated that they never had another ghostly incident again while living in Carthage, Indiana. So, if by chance you happen to know someone who lives in a large blue home located at Carthage, Indiana, and you happen to hear stories of cigarette butts seeming to fall just out of nowhere from the ceiling, bear in mind this probably just an old cigarette smoking man getting in his last few puffs before he crosses over to the other side. I'm Sir Creepster, and until next time, stay terrified. <laughs>